2018 Penn State preview and prediction. I'm going to be giving a game by game preview of each game and a uh, result and a score. So, just with a preview on the Penn State team, I think that this is a team they might be taking a little bit of a step back. I don't think they're quite as talented as they were a year ago, but I do think that they have the ability to be able to have a record similar to what they did last year. They just got to play. Um, a little bit better in the big games and towards the end of those games and be able to find ways to win. I do, we got Trace Van Shorley back. We got some good receivers back. Jawan Johnson, DeAndre Tompkins. We got a, a good O-line coming back. We got pretty much everybody coming back from that. Then, on the defensive side of the ball, we got, we're pretty good at the end. We're good at cornerback. We're a little shaky at linebacker and safety and defensive tackle. Um, we got some guys coming back defensively, but we, we don't we don't got a lot. And I, I, I do think this is a team that's going to struggle a little bit, um, especially defensively. But I, I think that Penn State can be as good as they were last year. It's just going to take time and development. And Trace mccrory has got to perform well. The O-line has to develop. Miles Sanders has to continue to be good. And we got to have good receivers. If this offense can, com- can compete and outscore teams, we can be as good as anybody in the country, I think. But the offense has to really perform, and I don't know if it's going to be able to do that. But I do think this is a team that is going to be good. I think they return enough talent to be pretty close to what they were last year. They just got to you know, perform and be a good team. So in the first game, they got Appalachian State. Appalachian State loses their four-year starter quarterback from graduation. From graduation, he was a very good quarterback. Appalachian State is a good team. They're, they're they're one of the best group of five teams, but they're a lot smaller on both lines, and I think that Penn State is going to um, use that as an advantage. I think that Penn State is the better team, but the way you beat Appalachian State is you go out and you kill them at the beginning because if you don't, the longer they hang around the better chance they think of winning the game. And the more confidence they get and the more doubt Penn State gets. And momentum is big in football. You know, when you're going high, you know, people are all, yeah, you know. And when your things aren't going well, you're like, oh, we stink. We're never going to do this. You know, it's kind of like that in every sport. But, you know, you don't want a quiet Beaver Stadium. You want a loud, boisterous BB Beaver Stadium that's going to be ready for, you know, a 2018 Penn State football team. So I, I think it might be a little bit of a slow start. Defensively, I think Penn State might struggle, but I think Appalachian State is also going to have their kinks to work out. And I think Penn State offensively, you know, they're, they're, they, it might be a little bit of a slow start, but I think that they're going to be okay at the end of the game. I got Penn State 35-17 at the end of this one. Next week, I got Pitt at Pitt. It's going to be a tough game. Pitt's not always motivated for this game. They're going to be ready. They're going to, you know, really want to win. Penn State's going to want to win, too. But I don't know if they're going to want to win as much as Pitt. And Pitt, Penn, Penn State's got to match Pitt's intensity. Pitt is not as talented as Penn State. It's not even that close. But Penn State's got to be able to handle Pitt's offense. they got to be able to, you know, not have a lot of dumb turnovers, not let Pitt, you know, hang around in the game. I think that might happen a little bit. I think the Penn State's defense might struggle a little bit. I think Penn State's offense might have a little bit of a hard time getting going. You know, at night at Pitt, even though it's going to be probably about half and half, you know. But it's not going to be an easy game. This is a game that I think is probably Penn State's fifth hardest game on the schedule, honestly. But, uh, you know, Penn State's got to be ready for it. I, I got Penn State 34-20. Next, I got at Kent State versus Kent State. Kent State's not a good group of five team. I don't think this game's going to be all that close, but... Penn State still got to show up. They they can't take them lightly, but Penn State is way more talented on paper, and they should be able to win this game handily. Next, we got at Illinois on a Friday night. Illinois started a lot of true freshmen last year, which means they were very, very young and also very, very bad. They're going to be a little bit older this year. They're going to be sophomores, but still very young, you know, a little smaller, a little, you know, not as experienced, not as strong as some of the juniors and seniors. They got to continue to develop. They're a good team, but I don't know if they're going to be good enough to really compete in the Big Ten. And at the end of the day, that's why I do think Penn State's going to win 41-14.
But Penta, they gotta be careful. It's a Friday night. You know, it's kind, you know, kind of be a boring game. You know, on paper, but Penn State's got to show up and they got to play with intensity necessary to win Big Ten football games. Next week, I have versus Ohio State. It's a whiteout. Dwayne Haskins' first big start. Do I think Dwayne Haskins is going to be nervous? No, I can guarantee you Dwayne Haskins is going to be a little nervous because every person would be in that situation when 107,000 people are screaming at you, you know, at the top of their lungs, you know, to screw up. You probably will screw up. So, I think there's going to be a little bit of that happening with Ohio State. I think Penn State's got a big advantage with the home field. I think if this game was to play at Columbus, Ohio, I think Ohio State would win by two scores, maybe even more. But I think it's at home. I think Penn State could squeak out a win, 28-27 Penn State on the table right now. But I would not be surprised if Ohio State wins because they are more talented defensively, and I think they're probably just as talented offensively as Penn State, if not more talented. So they got to be... Careful, okay? Penn State's defense has to be able to... If, if Ohio State's going to put up 30 on Penn State, I don't think they're going to win. You know, Penn State's got to be able to hold Ohio State, and if they don't, they're in trouble. But I do think Penn State's going to pull it out. They're going to get the 5 and out. Next, we got Michigan State versus M- Michigan State. Penn State lost to them last year. Penn State was better than Michigan State last year, but they had a lot of drops. They played flat. They didn't know how to react to the weather. They were devastated from last week. They didn't know how to play well, and they didn't play well. They played flat. They were sloppy. But Penn State was the better team. But, you know, Michigan State came out and they beat them. It was a home game for Michigan State. It was after a devastating loss for Penn State. I mean, this year, Penn State's got a bye, and it's at home. So Penn State's got the advantage there. I think that Penn State is going to be a little worse than they were last year. I think Michigan State's going to be a little better. But I this game's not played in Michigan State. It's not played at Michigan State. It's played in Pennsylvania at Penn State. I think Penn State's got the advantage with the bye week. I think they're going to be ready, and I think Penn State's going to win 34-24. Next, we got at Indiana. This is a game where Indiana can hang around. It's an away game. They're, they lost some talent. They're not probably going to be as good as they were last year, but Indiana's going to be ready, and you can't let it go. Indiana hangs around with some good teams. They just haven't been able to pull out the big win. And this is a game where they have a good chance, I think. But I think Penn State will wake up. I think they're going to be able to put up points in this Indiana defense. It's not that good. And the Indiana offense has some question marks. I got Penn State 38-24. Next we got Iowa at home. Iowa was a good team last year, okay? But people think that Penn State got outplayed by Iowa. that Or people think that Iowa was like real close to winning, and they were. But Penn State murdered Iowa in that game. They outgained them. They outplayed them by so much. Iowa got lucky to be in that game. And Iowa is, is a good team, but this is home at Penn State. The offense is good, but it's kind of an old school offense, and I I don't think I was I think I was gonna have a hard time playing at Penn State. Uh, I think they're gonna have a hard time putting up points. I think Penn State's gonna be able to put up points. I got Penn State thirty one thirteen, and now they're eight and zero, which is surprising. I don't think they'll be eight and zero, but I'm predicting them to be eight and zero. So it's kind of weird. I'd be very I'd be very surprised and happy if they're eight and zero, but I got them at eight and zero. Now is where it kind of goes downhill. We got at Michigan. Michigan is probably a little bit more talented than Penn State. They're they have the best front seven in college football, I think. They're very talented. They're really big. They're strong, and Penn State's O line has got to be able to perform in this game. If they can perform and if they can get the running game going, that'll open up the passing game for McShorley, and that's going to be huge because pretty much they're going to say if they shut down the running game, then they're going to know that they're going to be passing. Michigan can drop some guys back into the secondary because they got such a good. Front seven, Pentateau line's got to be able to handle it. it they got to step up. They got to put their big boy pants on, and they got to play. Because if they don't, we're going to be losing to Michigan. Michigan's a very talented team. I think they're going to win this game, and I got them twenty-seven seventeen. I think Penn State's going to struggle too much offensively, and I think Michigan at home will be able to put up some points on Penn State. Now we got Wisconsin at home. Wisconsin is probably also more talented than Penn State. I think you know they got a very good running back. They got a good offensive line. Defensively, they're pretty good. The secondary is a little weak. I think Penn State can get some, you know, Justin Shorter, Jawan Johnson, the six four guys, you know, behind them and, you know, over top of them, like they did two years ago in the Big Ten Championship. But, you know, 
I think Wisconsin is going to be ready for it, and I see them losing 27-24. I think that Penn State will be able to put up points, but I think Wisconsin is going to be able to put up points in that Penn State defense. I think Penn State's defense is going to be getting better throughout the year, but I just don't know if it's going to be ready to beat and hold Wisconsin in a physical contest after Michigan, after Iowa, very physical teams. I don't know if they're going to be ready for it. I think they're going to lose and drop their second game in a row and break my heart for the third year in a row. At Rutgers. Rutgers is better than they were. Penn State's got to be careful in this game, but I do think Penn State's the better team. They're more talented. They should be ready for it. I got Penn State 35-20. I don't really know what to say. I think they're getting better, Rutgers, but I still don't know if they're ready to compete with the top-tier teams in the Big Ten East. Next, we got Maryland. Maryland is a talented team. They're younger. They're kind of developing. I don't think they're as talented as Penn State, but they're a team that you can't look past, really. But I do think that Penn State is going to be better than Maryland. But... Maryland's going to be ready for revenge because Penn State killed Maryland last year, 66-3. With the whole, this, this whole DJ Durkin stuff, we don't know if he's even going to be coaching by the time this game happens. So, I don't really know what's going to happen. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with Maryland losing this game 38-21 with a Penn State win. And that's going to cap off Penn State season with a 10-2 record. Uh, with losses in back-to-back -back weeks with Michigan and Wisconsin and winning the last two games with Rutgers and Wisconsin. So that's what I think, you know, Penn State's got a really talented rec recruiting class coming in. I think Micah Parsons can make an impact. Justin Shorter with his size and the speed of a receiver, I think he can make an impact. Maybe Ricky Slater at running back possibly as well. The other guys, I think they're a couple years away. Maybe um, we've got a big defensive tackle coming in. He might be able to make an impact as well. So that's how I see it going, and that's what I think at the end of the day. So that's my video, 10 and 2, good bowl, New Year's 6 bowl, probably top 10 by the bowl game, and hopefully at the end of the year as well. So that's my video, peace out guys.